back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you guys a super exciting commission I did for YouTube and New Jeans. I couldn't believe it was New Jeans when I heard. I was so excited because I love their songs and I've been dying to share this with you guys. So if you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube Shorts and also Instagram Reels. Basically, it's a quick video that shows the creation of these jean nails and they're based on New Jeans overall aesthetic, the New Jeans, the Y2K vibes, and it's to promote their newest songs, but namely Super Shy. And so I'm gonna show you how I came out with the design, and then I'm gonna jump into a quick tutorial where I'll show you how I cut up my jeans to create some of the most fun and interesting parts of the design. So here we go. So when I was asked to do this commission, there were two main asks. One was using real jeans and the second was painting each of their names. Outside of that, I had free reign and this is the inspo board I came up with while designing the nails. I wanted to incorporate popular forms of art done on jeans like painted jeans and jean flowers. And then I wanted something more to jump out at you, something that's also fun. And that's when I thought of the jean pocket and having an mp3 and binky light stick in them. So for the mp3 and beaded strap came straight from new jeans and the stripes on the index finger also comes from their super shy skirts. To create the painted jean look, I used canvas textured gel polishes which cure with a matte texture that resembles realistic dried paint. You might have noticed that there are some differences between the track and the final. We decided to remove the new jeans bunny because we wanted to keep the focus on using real jeans and also that bunny that I had wasn't the right bunny for this album. We also decided to keep some nails raw as in the jeans are not encapsulated with gel because seeing that real jean texture is just different. Note that these nails were made for content purposes and not for daily wear. It is fun nail art, don't overthink it. And they're made as press-ons. Now let's get to the fun part. I'm using Jello Jello Fit Me Tips in Coffin, and an important thing to know is that I went one size down for all of my nails. The jean fabric adds some bulkiness to the nail that when I used my regular sizes, it ended up being uncomfortably big, and sizing down seemed to work. I would make sure to test out a couple nails before you do everything. So now I'm just prepping the nail, filing the shape down, and then also buffing it. This will scratch up the surface and make it easier to adhere the jean fabric. Now I did some testing with different types of denim shades. First I tried this really light wash. It used to be blue but now it's kind of more white. And that's how it came out. And this is like my medium shade. It's like the lighter patch near like the knees of where your jeans are, I guess. And once you encapsulate it with gel, it actually comes out so much darker. And then this is the nicer blue shade. So keep in mind that whatever shade you pick, it's going to come out quite a bit darker. We like the idea of having a variety of shades though, so we used a mix of the two blue shades plus the raw denim. So to create these encapsulated jean nails, first of all, I measured out a piece of my jeans and then I just cut down the shape so that it would be easier to work with. Make sure it's not too small because we'll trim it down more later. Also, I used a pair of my skinny jeans which is maybe a little more elasticy than other types and it's really thin. This would probably be easier to use than a jean fabric that is thicker and stiffer. So to attach the jean to the nail, I'm going to use nail glue and I'm just going to brush this all over the top of the nail tip and do it fairly quickly because it does dry pretty fast. stick on the fabric and then just smooth it out. I was worried about this part when I first heard of using real jeans because I really wasn't sure how well jean nails would stick onto a nail because it's curved. I wasn't sure if it would be nice and smooth and not be bulgy or wrinkly, but it turned out really well. Once it's been glued on, now you can flip it over and then just trim around the edges. Take your time with this and don't get too close to the actual nail. Be careful of trimming too much. And you might get some little flyaways on the side. You can just trim those as well. Try not to pull too much. 
And here we have our bra denim nail. But I'm going to encapsulate this one. And so I'm using some Jin B Crazy Top No Wipe Overlay. And I'm going to take a generous amount on a brush and then just apply it all over the nail. And you will see that the nail is starting to change color as the gel is soaking into the denim. So while testing this out, I also thought about putting a plastic tip on top so that the gel doesn't need to soak through the whole fabric and turn it so dark in color. But then it did work, but it just became so bulky I didn't really like it. Make sure you're also putting it around all of the edges as well. Don't worry about it being a little bit messy at this point, just make sure all the denim is soaked in gel. Once it is fully covered, cure it in your lap. And this is the cured version. You can see that it's very rough right now and I'm using a nail file to file down all the edges until they're smooth. You can keep doing this and adding gel and curing it and sanding it until you get the smoothness that you want. I'm also going to file down the cuticle area so that it matches my finger. This looks like it's fitting pretty well from both sides. And I'm going to use my nail file and also file down the top of the cuticle area just to reduce some of the bulkiness. Definitely do this over a dust collector if you have one. And then finally, I'm using a nail buffing block to just buff over everything and make sure it's super smooth. Once you're happy with it, you can use an alcohol wipe to just clean it off. And then I'm going to use a no wipe top coat to seal everything in. But really, you don't have to do the step yet. You could finish your painting first and then seal everything with a top coat later. And here is how the completed jean encapsulated nail looks. Next, I'm going to show you guys how I did the hand painting for all of their names. I'm no expert at this, but typically when you do this type of calligraphy handwriting style, there are two rules. For downward strokes, you apply more pressure to the brush to make a thick line. And for upward strokes, you do lighter pressure and thinner lines. So if I want to write hello, I'm going to start with a thicker downward stroke, thin going up, and then thick going down again, thin going up, thin going upwards, and then thick downwards, and then thin going up. And basically, you just kind of go back and forth. Each time you go up, it's thin, and then once you go back down, it's thick. And even though everything looks connected, you don't have to write it all in one stroke. Those are the basics. Now for nail art, I'm gonna do this effect but using two brushes. Liner S will be for my thicker lines and then the long liner, which is thinner as you can see, will be for the thin lines. So this here is one of the nails I did for testing purposes and you can see the 3D jean flower there is kinda coming apart. But I'm going to use this to show you guys how I paint hello on this nail. I'm using D Gel's white painting gel which is my favorite white. And when I paint this word, I'm actually not going to do it one full letter at a time. Instead of alternating between my short and long brush to do the thick and the thin lines, I'm actually going to leave some space and do all the thick lines first. Of course, you don't have to do it this way because you do have to kind of guess where the thicker lines are. But this way was a bit more efficient for me to get through all of the painting. Sometimes I'll use the brush to kind of help visualize where the thinner line will be and then I'll draw the next thick line. Now that the thick lines are done, I'm going to switch to my long liner and do the upward thin strokes. Of course you don't actually have to paint upwards, paint in whichever way that makes it easy for you. And here is the completed hello. And before I cure this, I'm going to show you guys how I add my glow in the dark. This is my white glow in the dark powder from Techno Glow. I've been using their glow in the dark powder since I started basically and I love it. 
I basically just dump the powder over the uncured gel and tap off any excess. Make sure you don't have any sticky gel anywhere else on the nail. And then just cure this under your lamp. Once it's done, just brush off the excess. And it usually comes out really clean, just like this. And of course, we gotta test it and see how it looks in the dark. So I'm just activating it with my torch. And then, ta-da! I love glow-in-the-dark design so much. And just for fun, let's just do it on these nails as well. And watch them all glow. Next step is the jean pocket. So the base of the nail is just the raw denim texture. I did not encapsulate it. And now I'm taking a small piece of denim and placing it over the nail. And then I'm going to use some scissors to cut on either side. This will help me get the sizing right for the pocket. Now from where you made the little cut marking, you want to cut in an outwards slant. So you want it to get bigger. And do this for both sides. And this is because the nail also gets bigger and you need to create extra space for the pocket to open. Trim down the top as well, but also leave it just a tad longer than how long you want the pocket to be. And this is to create that little V shape at the bottom of like all jean pockets. Ta da! There we go. Now it's looking more like a pocket. And just to make sure it's the right size, I'm gonna place it over the nail and kind of just take a look at whether I like the shape. And just to show you guys, once it wraps around the edges, because we did that slanted cut, there will be some space for you to put something in the pocket. So I actually filmed this part when I did the actual nails and I used nail glue here to stick the jean onto the nail. But it actually doesn't work super well. Sometimes it sticks a little bit to my finger. It's not the easiest to use, but it still works. I think a better way now that I look back is to just use some gel polish like the Jimmy Crazy Top instead and just add a little bit to the edges and then use a torch to flash cure it on. That probably would have been a bit easier and quicker but this still worked for me and that's the method that I actually used when I made this nail. I started by attaching just the tip and then I did the two sides of the V shape. And remember how I said to leave some space for the top? That's because I'm going to just roll it over to create a little lip so that it's very obvious that it's kind of coming out like a real jean pocket. For this specific part, I also used nail glue. And I actually think nail glue for this part is better because you'll end up kind of soaking the whole rim in the nail glue and it'll harden the jean fabric but not too much compared to using a gel overlay. If it's not holding up well, just add a bit more glue, um, but make sure not to add too much glue so that you're gluing your pocket down, otherwise it won't be able to open. So once the rim is kind of finished and it's dried, it kind of stiffens the denim a bit, but it's still bendable like this. So it actually makes it pretty perfect to work with because you can just bend it over and then secure the sides as well. If you want your pocket to stick out more, then you can stick the sides closer inwards on the nail so that you have a bigger space inside the pocket. And once it's secured, this nail is done and your pocket is ready to go and ready to store our little blinky light stick. Next up is sculpting the 3D MP3 player. 
and then also the beaded strap. So I'm taking toy gel, it's a 3D clay, and I'm using some painting gel to mix in a pinkish color. I didn't want to add too much color because I wanted it to be kind of jelly-like. And I wanted this to be reminiscent of the electronics in like the 2000s, where it was always like colored and semi-transparent so you can kind of see the hardware inside. And it was just super cool like that. If it gets too pigmented, you can always add in more 3D clear clay gel. Remember to use gloves while sculpting and mixing colors and try not to sculpt with your fingers. Admittedly, sometimes I still do it with my bare fingers, but I try not to. So I sculpted a little rectangle as the mp3 player and then now I mixed in some paint to create the buttons. At this point, the mp3 player there has already been cured and so that's kind of hard already. And so now I'm using a silicone tool to help shape the triangles for the left and right buttons. After making all of the buttons and curing them, I had the idea of using these foils to create the screen. And here I'm basically just matching them up to see which color I liked. I really love how it gives that shiny look to make it really look like a screen. So I picked this pink color and I'm just cutting out a small rectangle, adding some gel, and I'm going to use my tweezers to place it on the mp3 player, press down on it and then cure. And this is the little mp3 player, it's not completely done but I wanted to check that it would fit in the pocket and it did not. So it's a bit too fat and I took a filer to just file down the mp3. This actually took a while for me to file down so try to be wary of how thick you're making your mp3 player and how big your jean pocket is. And then once you're happy with it, you can add your top coat. And at this point, I didn't think about painting in a song name. Uh, that came later and you'll see it. But ideally, you would paint it first before top coating. Now to make the beaded strap, we need some colorful beads, which I didn't have any. I only had clear ones from making my Sakura nails. So I'm just going to paint them myself. Using tweezers to hold up the beads made it super easy and didn't take me too long. And voila, here are my painted beads on a fishing string. And then I basically just folded this in half, held onto it with tweezers and added some gel to cure and secure the strap together. So once cured, it looked like this. Make sure to leave some room so that the beads can actually move around. And then trim off the excess and there's the little mp3 and that's when I decide to go back and paint in super, in super tiny letters because this is to promote super shy after all. Now the mp3 player is done. I'm not going to show how to sculpt the blinky light stick because I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, the last thing I'll show you guys is how I do these 3D jean flowers. And those actually did take me some time to figure out. So we're going to start with a piece of jean fabric and I'm folding it in half to help me cut this into a circle. That didn't work very well because it came out super oval like a tater tot. So now I'm just gonna fix it. It doesn't need to be perfect, but just a circular shape like this is good enough. Now you don't need to use a marker to do this, but I just want to show you how I'm planning to cut up the circle. And you can totally do this if you want, and if it helps you with cutting. So basically I'm just going to cut the circle in the swirl shape pattern. After watching a bunch of YouTube videos on making jean flowers, I thought that this would probably be the easiest way to make really small miniature versions of them. Once the swirls is cut, we're going to go back and cut little half circles 
on the outer edge of the swirl. It's very important that you're doing this on the outer edge and not the inner side. And basically you're kind of just cutting little V shapes so that it kind of looks like a scalloped flower pattern. And these curved shapes will basically be the petals. So this is how it should start to look, but all the way through. It's pretty tedious, but we're finally done with the cutting. And now I have some Jimby Crazy Top Gel and also my Jello Jello Torch, which is touch sensor. And I'm going to use these to help secure and create the flower. So starting from the inside middle part of the swirl, just use some tweezers and wrap it around. Just like that. And as you can see, it's kind of like the center of a flower. Play around with it. You can make it tighter or looser. Just depends on how you want your petals to look. And then once you're happy with it, get some of the gel and just spread it over the bottom. Make sure it kind of soaks into the denim a bit so that it sticks together. And then I'm just using my torch to flash cure it in place. All right, so now the center is done. And then basically you just repeat the same steps and you keep swirling the denim around and gluing it together. So once your flower is about the right size that you like, you can cut off any excess. And there's quite a bit of excess here, so really you can start with a smaller circle or a smaller swirl to just save some of the cutting time. And now I'm just adding more gel to the bottom to make sure that everything is secure and nothing will come apart. And once you're done curing, this is our completed little chain flower. If the bottom is a bit too bulky, you could also kind of trim it down, but be careful not to trim too much. And then this is how it looks compared to the chain flower nail. It kind of just fits right in there. That is all for today. I hope you guys learned something new or had fun watching. Thank you so much. See you guys next time.